Now I'm going to tell you something shocking. Everybody look this way. I'm going to tell you something shocking. Begins with the word compassion. I don't want anyone to move a muscle. I want you to look at me and I want you to listen to the word compassion. The Bible tells us that Christ was moved by compassion. That's the first word I'm going to use in this short part of my message. The second word is the word compel. Compassion and compel. I want to read the 35th verse of Matthew chapter 9. Then Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, I'm going to try this again. When he saw the multitudes, how many of you in this room believe that Christ can see things you and I cannot see? You know, I'm going to tell you, he sees that you are a terrified single mother. He sees that you're a young person growing up in a world where everything good has been taken. He knows the ones in this room that want to kill themselves. He feels something and sees something. And this is what the Bible said. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary, scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest that he send out laborers into the harvest. I want to read another translation of just the last, a, a little part of that. He was moved with compassion. Charles Spurgeon said that Christ was so visibly overcome by compassion, he described it this way. What he saw not only affected his eyes, but his heart. He was overcome by sympathy. His whole frame was stirred with an emotion which put every faculty into forceful movement. He waded into sickness. He waded into disease. He invaded the misery of the humans that he saw, the people. That's the way he was. Someone asked me, why is preaching powerless today? Because the preachers have no compassion. They're not moved by it. They're not broken by it. They don't look at an audience. Too many of our young preachers see them as a check, as a statistic. But you are not a check. You are not a statistic. Do you know that you are so loved by God that God the Father bankrupted heaven so he could save you? Am I preaching it? So Spurgeon said, this compassion overpowered him. He had no resistance to it. It affected every fiber of his being. And Spurgeon went on to say that Matthew had to invent a word to explain Jesus. You see, it's translated in the English, compassion. But in the original language, it's actually a word that was created by Matthew himself. He added it to the vocabulary. But we find it as compassion. But what Matthew is trying to say is that it was such a profound power. When I was young, I had the honor of picking up David Wilkerson at LAX and driving him to a crusade. I never met a man more broken for the lost. There was a day when ministry was totally different than it is today. Totally different. David would weep. He couldn't help himself when he saw a drug addict. 
So every month, I got to be with David Wilkerson. And every month, I would be at the Shrine Auditorium watching Miss Coolman. And she, those, you saw the awe that went for those that are older and remember her. The love of God that used to come out of that woman. When the church quit acting like God loved them is when we lost our influence. Because it was that simple fact that we acted as though we were loved. Somebody loves me. Somebody loves me. Why do I know that when it looks dark and bad and impossible that I'm going to be okay because somebody loves me? Now I'm going to stop. And I'm going to tell you that this compassion is moving you right now toward Christ. Right now, you've hardened your heart. You've hardened your life. You've done so many things to defend yourself against loving. Well, I don't want to love God. That's the last thing I want to do is love God. I don't trust anybody. I've been hurt and lied to. Not only that, I've hurt people myself. This is a deceptive lying culture that we live in but let me tell you something I mentioned it last night I'm gonna mention it again there was nobody with a harder heart than Matthew the man who wrote this about his compassion the man who invented the word that we are looking at compassion was a tax collector jaded broken hardened petrified by the love of money had killed every last spark of humanity. And when Christ headed toward his table, all of the audience was watching, wondering, what is he going to say to that man? Is he going to rebuke him for betraying his own people? Is he going to scold him as, only, as he did the Pharisees and Sadducees? And everybody was shocked. Because when he got there, he said two words, follow me. And when he said those words, the love came out. The compassion came out. Suddenly he realized there's something about this Jesus that I have to have. Then he went to the cross. Sometimes I like to tell you that being when Christ was on the cross and young preacher look at me you always want to preach on the cross you say well Mara, people don't want to hear it people don't know what they want to hear until the holy spirit comes on them and that's when you preach the truth how many of you love the cross of jesus christ how many of you love that jesus went to the cross for us how many of you believe in preaching the cross today i believe it 